life. Today I'm going to do the last video in my kind of informal series, Advice from a Chronically Ill Law Student. I started the first two videos and didn't really think that I was going to do a series, but they fit so well together that I think they're going to be kind of this good series of like 1L tips. And these are just things that I've distilled from going through my 1L year and things that I wish I would have known. Some of them are things that people told me but were kind of contradicted when I got to school and other things are stuff that I've kind of picked up along the way. So let's get into it. Okay, so my first tip is to outline early. You will hear this a lot, but you will also hear it kind of contradicted a bit once you get into law school and you know, you're kind of in your 1L orientation. And this is something that other law YouTubers have said as well. Uh, lipsticks and lattes, I love her. She's fantastic. Outlines early and Legal Eagle recommends it as well. And I'm, I'm on that bandwagon outline early different people do it different ways some people outline kind of every couple of weeks they put their notes together and outline some people do it every week figure out what works best for you but something is better than nothing and starting outlining like the middle of November is not a good idea and leads to a lot of like frustration and I think you can do better on your finals the earlier you start outlining and especially for people with chronic illness or disability that are in law school. I think the advice is tailored towards people that are able-bodied and, you know, don't have a lot of external stresses other than kind of the law school process and what that brings. But I highly recommend if you have any health issues, if you have family outside of law school, please outline early. You'll find it relieves a lot of your stress. You won't know what you're doing and that's totally fine. Outline banks are your best friend. So get connected, network with people. The other thing that I will say is an outline is not much different than you think it is. It kind of is a mystery and a lot of people leave it. As such, I don't think it's that. And this is something else that Liz Sisson Lattes talks about as well on her channel. She says it's just notes put together and that's basically the best way that I can describe it. It's your notes put together. And the further you get into law school, the more you learn to kind of distill those notes down and really pull out the key concepts. But it wasn't difficult to kind of know what was happening in our classes. Our professors really broke down the key concepts and it wasn't like a mystery of not knowing what you were supposed to learn. It was just a mystery of how to apply it. So your outline is going to be your notes with some additional elements added in from textbooks or supplements or their outlines. But you really want to focus on building up those class notes, taking good notes in class. You don't have to copy everything down, but you do want to make sure you're getting the important concepts down. And that's where a lot of your outline and the heft of your outline is going to come from. And and then I like to supplement that. You'll see with different things from all over. Barbary was a huge help for me and we got free Barbary access, their like 1L plan. And that was a lot of help to kind of supplement and figure out if you were missing anything. So that would be my first tip. Make sure you're outlining early and don't listen to what everybody else is doing. Uh, my second note is to find your own way of taking notes and briefs. So there are different ways of doing this. Some people do rainbow briefing, other people completely write their own, other people, you know, use Quimby and LexisNexis. I kind of have my own thing. I don't really like to write my own briefs. I started trying to do that my first semester and I had no idea what I was doing and a bunch of us had no idea what we were doing and so I just found myself supplementing with Quimby a lot and then I was like, I don't think this is helpful. I really take a lot of notes in my textbook. I highlight, I take notes, I underline. I make sure to really focus on the rule and where the rule and issue are coming from and so so I highlight with a lot of things pertaining to that and write notes pertaining to that because you want to follow the logic that the court is using to get to the rule that they get to and you want to understand how they pull that rule out of the logic and the explanation that they're using. So for me textbook notes are big. I don't rainbow brief. I have two colors now. I kind of went through a stages where I tried a lot of different things. We're all just trying to figure out like what works best for us. This semester I highlight with two colors. I highlight with purple which is like the main things that I want to pull from the case and then I highlight with yellow which is the black letter law. Just because your school is telling you to do one thing they're there to help you but you've got to figure out what works for you yourself and you know yourself best. My third tip is for all my chronically ill and disabled peeps out there. It's to contact your disability access center or your disability services relatively early in the process. So I reached out to mine about 
four months before I went into law school because they need paperwork. They use a lot of the LSAT paperwork if you have accommodations on your LSAT and they also use your paperwork from your undergrad and then they kind of work off of that and develop a plan for you and they take into account, you know, if your illness has changed or your status has changed, they take that into account as well. So that is my third tip. They, uh, my school's accommodations are pretty flexible. You know, obviously we're kind of a little controlled by the American Bar Association and their standards. I think, you know, contacting the center, uh, your disability access center as early as you can and trying to figure out ways to adapt and get a plan in place for you is really important and will help you, especially when it comes to final season when you need the least amount of stress possible. You really don't want to be worrying about it in the middle of final season. So that's my third tip. My fourth tip is to find at least one person to study with. So I am not a group study person. I never have and I don't think I will be. It's too many too many things going on at one time and I found myself getting really intimidated in a group format. My imposter syndrome was like coming out full force and it was not good. And so what I really figured out was dial down to like one or two people that I really worked well with. We jived well and to study with them and so I did a lot of my studying independently and then like a week or two before the exam we would meet up go through some practice problems together especially the ones that were posted to our like canvas or class that some of the professors don't have answers for they just kind of want you to get together in a group and work on them so that's what I would like get together with my partner or you know a few people and work on and so that kind of put us I think on a good page for the final because we all think differently and it's good to pick up thinking patterns and why people are approaching problems a little differently and you know what did they do I think you know getting together with somebody uh, learning from them and seeing what they have and vice versa is a great thing to do and I highly recommend it my fifth tip is that practice makes perfect so the earlier you start outlining the earlier you can start working on practice problems and that's really going to be your best friend because now you have this guide to the law but you have no idea how to apply it to situations all you know are your cases and so the practice problems really teach you how these things come up in real world circumstances and how cases apply moving forward. And so you really learn how precedent applies and then you learn the ins and outs of, of doing well on your exams. Uh, the more practice, I think the better you do. It saved me in contracts. You'll see like in comparison to a lot of your other classes, contracts is fairly straightforward other than the uniform commercial code, but I just could not understand how would apply to things like it just the law and the law of contracts was beyond me it took me a while for it to click and it, it was like a day before the exam and I had done a bunch of practice problems and I was getting like nowhere and it finally clicked and then everything kind of flew out and so that happens uh, you know you'll see there are certain things that you understand better than others so practice makes perfect keep doing your practice problems they're fantastic I love Quimby's practice problems especially and then I like working on the ones that our professors post to our course page. My sixth tip is to practice your essay writing. So this was one of those things where I went, I don't think I emphasized enough my first semester because I didn't understand the full importance of it. And I think that my grades, my grades were good, but I think they could have been better if I would have emphasized essay writing a bit more. And when I talked to my professors afterward, that tended to be the thing for like all of us was that people that did really, really well and got the rare high grades were the people that focused on the essay writing. We had all kind of gotten to the same conclusion, but it's the way that you explain it and the way that you bring it out or color it is really what differentiates you from the rest of the group. It's kind of like showing the answer for a math problem versus showing how you got there. So essay writing is your best friend. When you do practice problems, to get the general gist, it's good to do them in short form, but then you want to take some practice problems and you want to write it out long form, lots of pages and do it. Page count isn't fully representative but you do want to make sure you have a decent amount of words on the page and that you're doing a lot and you're writing a lot in your finals. My seventh tip is to go to office hours and not be afraid to ask questions. So law professors can be very intimidating and <laughs> sometimes it can seem like you know they don't want to get to know you or you're a little scared of them. All of my professors were really kind people. Some took a little bit of needling to get to know them a bit more and then you got to see kind of their true personality but they all are there to help and they will reinforce that go to office hours work with them if they see that you show up to class prepared they'll give you the
you the same respect. And building that connection with mentors is really important. They're a great guide and resource to go to. And sometimes it can be intimidating. And if you're afraid to ask questions, it's just something that you kind of have to work through and get over. But you'll see it, it does lead to success down the line because the more questions you ask, the more clarity you get and the more you understand the topic area. My eighth tip, and this goes a along with a lot of the exam tips, are to identify your problem areas. So when you're doing those practice problems, really pull out where the gaps in your knowledge are and work through those things. Uh, I know for me in contracts, it was the UCC for all of us, it was the UCC. And so you really want to work on problems that reinforce that, that go through that, that you understand how they are applied. You'll see there are certain parts of the law in any area that tend to come easily, but then there are certain parts that are a bit more ambiguous and harder to pull out or figure out how they apply. So I think identifying your problem areas and where you need to improve and where you need to put some more time is one of your best, is one of the best things that you can do for yourself when you study. My ninth tip is that cold calls are hard, but they get easier. So I will never forget the first day we were in CIFPRO at like 8.45 in the morning and we got cold called immediately. And it was the scariest thing I'd ever seen in my life because the one girl that was in our class was confused about what the reading was. It happens to everybody. If that is you, don't worry about it. I would recommend double checking the reading list beforehand and making sure that you're on the right page as everybody else. But it will get easier. Eventually, you'll see that you'll start to think like a lawyer a bit more. The answers that they're looking for in cold calls aren't as distant as you think they are. And it's really kind of amazing how you start to change as a person and how your way of approaching problems start to change. My 10th and last tip, and this is more of a personal tip, is that you are smarter than you think you are and you deserve to be there. So this was something that I needed to hear all the time my first semester because I really thought I had made the wrong decision and that I was a fish out of water and I had no idea what I was doing. I got in on, you know, kind of a personal note, but my LSAT score was good, but it wasn't great. My GPA was very good and my essay was very good. And so those were kind of the characteristics that I got in, but other people were kind of the reverse of that. And so some people like talk about their LSAT score the first semester. I think we're all just kind of feeling each other out at that point and we don't really know the right thing to say. And so I found myself getting really intimidated by other people and feeling like I didn't belong there. I wasn't as smart as everybody else was that I didn't understand everything like everybody else was. And it just took time for me to tell myself that that's not true and that there was a reason that I was there. And if that's not the same reason as everybody else, that's fine. I am a very faithful person and I just kept telling myself that God had put me there for a reason. Have to find your why. Like I said in my other video, you have to know why you're there and that will drive you a lot of the way through. And don't allow yourself to get intimidated by other people. There are things in other people's lives that we just don't know. And so give them the benefit of the doubt, give you the benefit of the doubt. It's okay to be intimidated, but don't let it take over you and don't let it control you and how you think about yourself. Be strong in yourself, be self-confident. It will be okay. There are many rocky days, but it is worth it and you will get through it and you will see that you come out the other side so empowered and so happy for yourself and amazed at the job that you've done. I am now in my second year and I just can't believe the transformation and I'm so happy to be here now and I actually weirdly enjoy it now and I enjoy my classmates. We've all kind of gotten really close as a unit and even if we're not all in the same classes, we, the whole 1L class pretty much knows each other because we're a small school and there's only a certain amount of people admitted to our school. We all know each other and, you know, we kind of know how to work together. Obviously, there will be people that you might have issues with or disagreements with, but all together, I'd say that we're a pretty tight knit bunch and that makes the experience worth it. And you'll see there's a lot of mentorship from students that are ahead of you in law school as well and they're there to help you. So if you're having a hard time, you can turn to them as well and ask them how they got through. Everybody will tell you the same thing. We all feel that way the first semester and even the second semester. It's okay to feel like you have no idea what you're doing. It's okay to feel intimidated. It still happens to me now. The realization that you're now in classes with people that are ahead of you in law school can be like disconcerting, but you'll get through it. You deserve to be there 100% and you are more capable than you think you are. I hope this
this video was helpful for you guys. Please like and comment. Subscribe for new videos every Saturday. If you like to see any more law school videos or you have ideas for videos that you'd like to see, please leave a comment below. I am happy to help. I'm happy to share kind of my experiences. Let me know what you want to see. I hope you guys have a great day and remember you can do this and you deserve to be there. Bye everybody.